So you're sitting on your couch, just chillaxing for the evening, and up pops on the television a movie preview of a sequel from one of your favorite movies of all time. And at first you're excited, you're like, all right, this is awesome. As you begin watching the preview, and at the very end, you're not really sure how to feel. You kind of have mixed feelings. It's one of those things where it could go really good or really bad, no gray area. After all, why mess with a really good thing? You don't make a movie better with a bad sequel, but you can definitely tarnish its reputation with a bad sequel. Suddenly you realize you don't really want to see the movie and take the chance of it messing up your memories and your experience of the original movie. This is how a lot of people feel right now at this very moment about Giorgio Armani's Aqua de Joe Absolu. Aqua de Joe is like the Star Wars of the fragrance arena insofar as it uh, people have really taken a kind of polarized effect on people. They're greatly approving of it or greatly disapproving. There doesn't seem to be a, a fence or a middle ground or a gray area for this one. So what exactly is Aqua de Joe Absolu? What is its claim to fame and how should you feel about it? Those are some questions we're going to ask on today's review. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Thank you for joining me. Let's get right into it. Let's talk for a moment about the top, mid, and bass notes of Aqua de Joe Absolu. The top notes are bergamot. Um, it is an aquatic fragrance, so there are sea notes there, some more of a kind of a briny marine. There are wood notes. In fact, that is its claim to fame is it the, the synergy between wood and water, or kind of like a yin and yang. But we also have a fruit, a little bit of a fruit basket there. There's grapefruit, there's pear, and there's apple as well. In the middle notes, we have a floral, more of a floral basket. We've got geranium, labdanum, uh, lavender, and rosemary. Ending up on the dry down with base notes of patchouli, woody notes, uh, tonka bean, and amber wood. Now let's talk a little bit about Absolu's presentation. Well, in a 100 ml bottle and a 75 ml bottle uh, and below, the bottle or flacon is of course glass and then the cap is made of a type of wood very complementary to the glass called ash. Ash wood is a really hard wood and it nice it has a nice hue to it and it polishes really well in its natural state without any lacquer or epoxy it's a really good complement to the aqua de joe absolute bottle and it also provides that the yin and the yang or that contrast between wood and steel as well as wood and glass wood and water so we're seeing you, you see a lot of contrasts in the actual presentation itself which bodes well for the actual fragrance because there's a lot of contrast in the fragrance too. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and see what the fragrance or smell of Aqua de Joe Absolute is like. Yin and yang, water and wood, um, men and women. It's used in a lot of philosophical circles to represent the differences between man and woman, but not the differences in a negative light, the differences in a positive. In other words, more of a symbiotic or synergistic relationship. Like what about a man bodes well for a woman? What about a woman is a compliment to a man? And it's much the same way with the presentation of Absolu. The ash wood or fraxinus they call it of the the cap itself in contrast with the polished steel creating more of a contrast too so there's that uh, the give and take the push pull uh, water and wood again coming up many times to show contrast but a complementary contrast in the presentation we're going to see that also in in the fragrance itself one of the benefits of designer fragrances is because it is fashion driven fashion focused so you see a lot of form and function along with the style and the bottle or presentation of Absolu is no exception it's not utilitarian but i would say minimalistic in that it has a simple yet uh, poignant story to tell if it was a song it would be sung in three notes water wood and patchouli with a chorus of symbiotic accords absolute comes in 40 75 and 100 ml bottles absolute is a flanker but it did come out about four years after profomo and then now there's absolute instinct as well absolute itself is promoted as a marine woody interpretation in which fruits floral scents and then finally the the wood and water combine to make a, a subtle yet sensual fresh fragrance it's been described as a kind of a freshie and i will admit 
it seems right out of the bottle and a little bit in the mid uh, like it is a freshie. However, it doesn't necessarily have the longevity or the life or the burst projection overall sense of shower gel freshness that most freshies have. So I personally wouldn't categorize this as a freshie. It is proposed that the marine notes and the wooden base create a harmony in a new expressive way. As you're going to see in a moment when I start playing the actual, there's three commercial spots, uh, one of which is like the making of, which is really neat. I do love the commercial spots that Giorgio Armani did for Absolute. They're fantastic. I love any kind of black and white as a medium for art and expression anyway, and this is no exception. It's really, really well done, but it kind of highlights the contrast between the marine. We've got marine, patchouli, water, and wood fusion, and it's a, an interpretation of man's connection with nature, nature's connection with man, and the harmony and the beauty and the synergy that follows that. Patchouli plays the matchmaker between the fiery but sensually subtle relationship between water and wood. You've got this, the woods and aquatics with a touch of sweet pear in the middle, and I really like that pear note. To me, that's the magnum opus or denouement of this fragrance. Tonka Bean does keep the fire stoked with this one as it's uh, that, that kind of almondy vanilla warmth is imbued by the tonka bean in this in this fragrance but it's not overdone probably could have been a little bit more actually absolute is a fragrance that does react to body heat so i would say that it is more of an activity fragrance and more of a summertime to fall it is not a winter fragrance at all so it is something that you want to wear during activity or movement to times to kind of stoke the fire of that fragrance it'll stay within about a two to three foot nimbus of your movements Okay, let's talk a little bit about Aqua Joe Absolu's opening. The floral notes of Absolu come off pretty strong in the opening, but before you're convinced that it's a floral fragrance, that's where the fruit basket comes in and, and takes over. Now, this does at first seem like a very fresh, fruity fragrance, but the fruit doesn't last very long as well. It, it dies off in a, around the mid, but in the very beginning, you, you begin to question, is this even a man's fragrance? Because it does come off really strongly floral in the beginning. So it's not one of those, if you're smelling it on a fragrance strip, it's going to come off pretty strong floral, but you want to wave it around and let it dry down a little bit and take another whiff of it. But more of a sense for what Absolute is trying to do there. Now on the skin, the floral doesn't hit quite as strong. It does come off more on the fruity side, but again, give that about 20 minutes and, and that dries down a little bit and you're going to get more of the patchouli and the woodsy and the aquatic notes coming through, bringing up the rear being a lot stronger. The bergamot and the rosemary and the labdum, labdumum, labdenum, it's a hard word to say, uh, actually are more like a, a welcome wagon. They're, they're what shows the appealing and welcome side uh, of Absolu. And so that's why they're more in the, in the top and mid notes and not so much in the bass notes. They remain a consistent but not persistent layer in the appeal and the longevity of this fragrance. Fruits are relegated to the sideline pretty quickly in Absolu, with the exception, as I mentioned earlier before, of that pear note, that kind of semi-sweet, juicy pear note, imbued with a sense of sweet fruitiness in the opening. And once Absolu's final notes make their strongest appearance, that's when the pear note finally lays its head to rest and kind of goes away. So it drifts off into the mid and the dry down isn't there. In talking about the mid, uh, mid is where the wood and aquatic water fusion takes place fresh from the shower feel to it uh, without the shower gel smell what sets absolute apart a, a little bit i believe is the how it works with the bergamot and the floral fragrance the floral fragrance works very symbiotically with the bergamot and the patchouli in this in the mid and the pear adds just enough sweetness like a gunpowder layer and a bottle rocket that shoots it into the stratosphere thus lighting the remaining packed powder of explosive color fragrant fragments into the air and into the atmosphere as well and it will make the wearer go wow right around the four hour mark absolute is a body heat reactor you will catch your own silage trail and geranium notes warm notes as you move about lavender labdanum and bergamot will assail your senses throughout the mid before they kind of go away near the dry down and in terms of going away for me it was right around four or five hours and each time that i applied absolute i always did psh, psh, on both sides of my body two sprays now let's talk a little bit about absolute's dry down phase it's not an issue of not seeing the forest for the trees with absolute the forest is the trees so you've got that again that fusion of of marine water aquatic working with the woods here and i really like the representation that we're going to go to here in just a moment so what you're going to see 
in the background are the three commercial spots that I spliced together of uh, Absolute, Giorgio Armani's. And, and they're very creative in that they show kind of the fusion of man's connectivity with nature. And then, of course, there's that rep representative, the tree in the middle of an ocean so but i do like the fact that the tree itself isn't green it is dry it's like a drift it's like a large piece of driftwood uh, that has been relegated to a, a spot in the middle of the ocean representing ultimate connectedness and ultimate power between the aquatic notes and the woodsy the woody notes of absolute it's almost like a legendary representation can absolute live up to to its representation i think to a degree that it does but the thing that ultimately i'm going to say about absolute the dry down and this is going to be a uh, subjective and opinion based of course based on my opinion and my experience in the fragrance world uh, because again the polarizing effect of of this fragrance is is to be expected with the legendary status of Aqua de Joe itself, but Absolute ultimately for me doesn't live up to the performance of the commercial spot that was created for it to me. So it's not as projective, like you'll carry this in a nimbus of about four to five hours and then the dry down really starts to, to recede and become a little bit more subdued. As such, th saying that it, it is a great office fragrance, I'm definitely recommending it as a good fragrance, but it's it's not going to live up to the hype, I don't believe. Just like the sequel to that incredible movie that you go to and you have all these expectations, don't go into Absolute with a bunch of expectations and you won't be let down. There are quite a few uh, great fragrances out there that do what Absolute does and in some ways better and in a lot of ways more economically. And there within that water wood synergy is the unique note of marine or brine uh, or oceanic ozone that you kind of get from that. So that's really its only claim to fame or its uniqueness is it does that water wood fusion really well, but not like the legendary status that I think the commercial spots seem to indicate is going to going to be. So you you know that's that's an unrealistic expectation of absolute in my estimation. So there's a lot of other fragrances that do what Absolute does equally well, um, making Absolute a unique flanker, but definitely not a unique fragrance. But it will remain a pleasant scent that only the person that is a completionist in terms of brand will want to add to their collection. Well, that's it guys for my review of Aqua de Jo Absolute. I really appreciate your spending time with me and talking about this fragrance. It is a really good fragrance. Is it a great fragrance? I don't think so. Are the commercial spots great? You absolutely better believe they are. Check them out on YouTube if you haven't already. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment in the comments below. Your thoughts are always welcome and appreciated. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you next time.